All right, let's get into some schmoozing with Brad. Let's see what's going on with immigration in the United States of America. There we go. All right, so on March 6th, uh, U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, they announced the expansion of premium processing for certain F-1 students seeking optional practical training and F-1 students seeking science, technology, engineering, and math. OPT extensions, those are STEM extensions, uh, who have a pending I-765 application for employment and wish to request premium processing. What does that mean? It means they're going to expedite work permits for people on student visas. For F-1 students to expedite their work permits in 15 days, they have to fill out the form, the I-907, along with their I-765 and pay the premium processing fee of $1,500. Otherwise, students will have to wait months and months for their optional practical training work permit. USCIS Director Er M. Jadou said the availability of premium processing for certain F-1 students in addition to the ease of online filing will streamline the immigration experience for a great many international students. I'm going to add this, provided they have $1,500 to pay us. Now, USCIS is accepting premium processing requests for any work permit application that is pending for a person on a student visa. So if you have a student visa and you have your optional practical training work permit processing at this very moment, you can file for an expedite. Beginning April 3rd, that's the premium processing, but you got to pay for it. Beginning April 3rd, USCIS is going to accept form I-907, that's the expedite form, uh, filed either via paper or online for all I-765 applications. So if you haven't filed for your OPT yet, and you want a premium process, then you got to file it concurrently after April 3rd. The expansion of premium processing is part of USCIS's efforts to increase efficiency, reduce burdens to the overall immigration system, and is being implemented in a phased approach. The addition of online filing for the Form I-907 brings the total number of forms available for online filing to 16. And USCIS continues to accept the latest paper versions of all forms by mail. And USCIS says that in 2025, all work permits will be able to be filed premium processing processing, so that people can get their work permits in 15 days, provided you're willing to pay for it. The Biden administration plans to redesignate temporary protected status for Nicaragua, according to people familiar with their plans. It's not clear when the Department of Homeland Security would roll out this policy and plans were subject to change before final approval. Now, if you remember, Donald Trump sought to end temporary protected status for Nicaraguans, several other nationalities in 2017 and 2018, putting more than 300,000 people at risk of losing their legal relief. Last fall, the Biden administration announced an 18-month extension for temporary protected status for multiple countries, including Nicaragua. Redesignating TPS for Nicaraguans living in the United States would allow them to live and work in the United States without fear of deportation. Since taking office, Biden has designated six new countries for temporary protected status and redesignated six other nations, making a total of 712,000 immigrants currently in the United States eligible for temporary protected status. That's according to the Migration Policy Institute. Backlogs at the U.S. Immigration and Citizenship Services have delayed approvals, but nearly 537,000 people had temporary protected status as of November 2022. Now, Nicaraguans, they first received temporary protected status in 1999 after Hurricane Mitch wrecked havoc, wrecked or wreaked, wreaked or wrecked, same thing, I guess, havoc in Central America. The temporary protected status designation created by Congress in 1990, that helps residents from countries struck by natural disasters, armed conflict, or other extraordinary and temporary conditions. There was a total of 4,250 TPS recipients from the country in 2021, the U.S. Immigration Citizenship Services said in a congressional report. A record number of Nicaraguans sought to illegally enter the United States last year, fleeing political persecution and poor economic conditions. Those Nicaraguans who are coming in now, they are not going to be eligible for TBS. The Nicaraguans eligible for TBS had to be here in 1999. 
on March 6th, the New York Times reported that officials familiar with discussions within the Biden administration say they are considering detaining migrant families who cross the border illegally. The same policy he shut down because he wanted a more humane immigration system. Although no final decision has been made, the move would be a reversal for President Biden, who came into office promising a more compassionate approach to the border than his predecessor, Donald Trump. The Biden administration has largely ended the practice of family detention, instead releasing families into the United States temporarily and using ankle bracelets, traceable cell phones, or other methods to keep track of them. But the administration has turned to more restrictive measures as it struggles to handle a rise in migrants fleeing authoritarian governments and economic ruin in their countries. Officials also fear a surge at the border after May 11th, when the Title 42 public health measure that has allowed authorities to swiftly expel asylum seeking migrants expires. Basically, what's happening right now is they're turning people away at the border. But if you go over the fence, go under the fence, go through the fence, you are getting released and allowed to apply for asylum. Fear of going back home because you fear persecution. Um, And people, sadly, or depending on what your situation is, if you had a valid asylum claim or not, it's going to take years before those asylum claims are, are heard. And in the meantime, people will get their work permits. So when what they trying to do is stop people from going over, going under, or going through, and that's going to be May 11th, because they're going to say, well, if you touch ground in Mexico and you're now in the United States, goodbye, can't file for asylum anymore. So one of Biden's new measures include disqualifying a vast majority of migrants from being able to seek asylum at the southern border. And officials say the Department of Homeland Security is outlining what it would need to do to restart the temporary family detention by May 11th. So they're going to make it much more difficult for people to go over, go under, and go through. They're going to keep families together. A lot of times people come with their families. They say, okay, I got a family. You're not going to hold me. Now, Biden said, you are going to be held. You could be held in jail. And obviously, this practice is very controversial, mainly because of scientific consensus that detaining minors, even with their parents, can cause developmental damage. Family detention was also used by former Presidents George Bush, Barack Obama. They called Barack Obama before Trump got here, the the, uh, deportee, chief deportee, the commander in chief deportee. He deported more people than anybody until Trump showed up. Then Trump administration expanded the practice, detained even more families indefinitely. But his attempts to end limits on how long minors could be held, Trump's attempts were blocked by the courts. And in sad immigration news, on Sunday, authorities said at least eight people were killed when two migrant smuggling boats capsized in treacherous surf amid heavy fog marking one of the deadliest maritime human smuggling operations ever off of the United States shores. A Spanish-speaking woman on one of the Panga-style boats, which is a fishing boat, called 911 Saturday night to report the other vessel overturned in waves at Black's Beach. She said there were 15 people on the capsized vessel and eight on hers. Coast Guard and San Diego fire rescue crews pulled bodies of eight adults from the water, but fog hampered the search for additional victims. Recovery efforts resumed Sunday. No additional bodies, sadly, were found. The Coast Guard announced on Twitter that the search was suspended at 3.30 p.m. California time. Survivors may have escaped on land, including the woman who called 911. Authorities did not know anybody's whereabouts. Black's Beach is about 15 miles, 24 kilometers, north of downtown San Diego in a secluded area not far from the La Jolla shores. Now, hundreds of maritime smuggling operations occur every year off California's coast, and sometimes they turn fatal. In May 2021, a packed boat carrying migrants capsized and broke apart along the rocky San Diego coast, killing three people and injuring more than two dozen. Smuggling off the California coast has ebbed and flowed over the years, 
but has long been a risky alternative for migrants to avoid heavily guarded land borders. Uh, Pangas uh, boats enter from Mexico at night, sometimes charting hundreds of miles north in complete darkness so that they would not be found. Effective last Monday, U.S. and Customs and Border Protection has detailed 25 extra agents to a busy section of the northern border as the number of migrants, particularly those from Mexico crossing into the United States from Canada, is now rising. At least some of those agents temporarily reassigned to the northern border were formerly stationed on the southern border, according to a source at the Department of Homeland Security. NBC News previously reported on the rise of Mexicans crossing into the United States from Canada after legally arriving in Canada by air. Though the Mexican border remains a far busier sector for crossings by undocumented migrants, the source said the recent surge at the Canadian border is garnering attention inside the agency and they are going to be sending more resources there. A Customs and Border Patrol spokesperson said the agency began temporarily deploying Border Patrol agents from sectors not experiencing an influx to the Swanton section of the U.S.-Canadian border. I had to look up what the Swanton section was. I didn't even know what it was. It's Vermont, New Hampshire, and New York. That's the Swanton section. I learned something new, even at my age. Uh, and it has experienced an 846% increase in the apprehensions from October 22 through this January, compared with the same period a year prior. The Swanton se sector chief patrol agent, Robert Garcia said he's concerned about the welfare of migrants trying to cross through the frigid terrains. There's a lot of snow up there. And as a matter of fact, tonight they're expecting a nor'easter. So it's a lot of snow to cross over undocumented. And some good news for undocumented immigrants. Immigration status is no longer gonna disqualify more than 80,000 people from getting driver's licenses in the state of Minnesota under a bill signed by Governor Tim Walls on Tuesday, March 7th. Supporters of the effort dubbed Drivers Licenses for All say it will improve public safety by ensuring that all drivers are licensed and insured and have taken driver's education courses. Backers include law enforcement, faith, business, and immigrants' rights groups. 18 other states grant licenses to residences regardless of immigration status. The new law, which takes effect October 1st, reverses a 2003 change by then-Governor Tim Pawlenty. He was a Republican. Barring people without legal status from getting licenses, citing security concerns after September 11th terrorist attacks. Applicants still must pass written and, written and road tests and attest to their addresses in Minnesota. They won't be asked for proof of U.S. citizenship or permanent residency, but they must provide identifying documents such as an unexpired foreign passport, a consular identification document with the photograph, or a certified birth certificate issued by a foreign jurisdiction. Critics argued that eliminating the need to prove citizenship could create opportunities for voter fraud. Wall said there hasn't been a case in the last 20 years of a driver's license being used for illegal voting. Some scientists came out with some new statistics about black immigrants in the United States, their population, their spending power, and their political capital. Stephen Hubbard, senior data scientist, and Robert, Robin Lund of, for the American Immigration Council recently highlighted black immigrants in the United States in an article published in immigrationimpact.com. They wrote, black immigrants make up a vital part of America's rich cultural life. Think of authors Chinua Achib and Chamanda Engzi Adichie, musicians Miriam Makiba, Wycliffe Jean, comedian Trevor Noah, activist Marcus Garvey, NBA Hall of Famer and philanthrop philanthropist Dikembe Mutombo, to name but a few. For generations across the United States, Black immigrants have enriched our academics, music, cuisine, fashion, dance, and more. The article provi pr provided very interesting data on the overall population of black immigrants in the United States. The five states with the highest number of black immigrants, New York, number one, 737,000 black immigrants living in the state of New York, followed by Florida, 676,000, Texas, 319,000, Maryland, 239,000, New Jersey, 225,000. The black immigrant community is expanding at a fast pace in certain states. In about the last decade, the black immigrant population of Texas, for example, nearly doubled 
rising from 161,000 in 2010 to 319,000 in 2021. Maryland had the highest share of black immigrants in the United States at 3.9%. New York is the second highest share, 3.7% of the state population. That means 3.7% of the state population of the state of New York are black immigrants. Black immigrants make significant contributions to the U.S. economy. In 2021, black immigration households generated a total of $153 billion for the United States economy. They paid $39 billion in personal taxes, 24 billion of which was federal and 15 state and local. This left black immigrant households with $114 billion billion in spending power. Money households used to support American businesses, invest in housing and more. And as a black immigration population grows, so does their spending power, which is why you see people from all races and religions trying to go over, under, and through the fence or take a rickety boat boat, and risk their lives to come here. Look at the spending power of just one group of immigrants. While black immigrants make a small percentage of the overall U.S. population, they're obviously more highly concentrated in some cities and states. In these areas, the concentration of black immigrants means that they may be able to exert more considerable electoral pressure in state or local elections. For example, while there were 2.4 million eligible black immigrant voters in the United States, a full 38.7% of those voters lived in either New York or Florida. And black immigrants also make vital contributions to the workforce, particularly in industries facing labor shortages, such as healthcare and transportation. Black immigrants are more likely to work in healthcare than other immigrant groups. In 2021, a total of 719,000 black immigrants worked in the healthcare and social assistance industry, representing 3.3% of the entire industry's total workforce. With healthcare occupations, 152,000 black immigrants worked as home health and personal care aides, 130,000 as registered nurses, and 16,000 black immigrants worked as medical doctors. The industry with the second highest percentage of black immigrant workers was transportation and third warehousing. If anybody watched the Oscars last night, the 95th annual Academy Awards, they would have seen Ki Hu Kwan's comeback reached its pinnacle with the Everything Everywhere All at Once star winning the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor. In his acceptance speech, Kwan gave a summary of his life story saying, my journey started on a boat. I spent a year in a refugee camp. And somehow I ended up on Hollywood's biggest stage. They say stories like this only happened in the movies. I cannot believe it's happening to me. This is the American dream. Quan was seven when he left Vietnam on a cramped boat in the late 1970s, landing in Hong Kong with his father, while his mother and three siblings went to Malaysia. The family was reunited when they immigrated to the United States in 1979, a move he said was extraordinarily traumatic. Quan told The Guardian last year, we were refugees. Nobody wanted us. They would call us fresh off the boat. They would make fun of us when we were in school. You can imagine what that does to the mental state of a child. His life changed when he went to support his younger brother at an audition at the age of 12. Quan did not intend to audition but the casting director suggested he try out and he was chosen to play the Chinese pickpocket short round in 1984's Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. And he said director Steven Spielberg deserves credit for being the first person in Hollywood to put an Asian face in a Hollywood blockbuster. Short round is funny. He's courageous and he saves Indy's ass. Last night, Indiana Jones star Harrison Ford presented the Best Picture Award to Quan, and after thanking the cast and crew behind everything, everywhere, all at once, plus his wife, Echo, and Goonies co-star Jeff Cohen, Quan, who had taken a 30-year break from the spotlight due to lack of roles available to him as an Asian actor, concluded his speech by saying, to all you out there, please keep your dreams alive. In 2018, after doing decades 
of behind the scenes work. Juan got inspired by the success of Crazy Rich Asians, began auditioning again, landing his everything, everywhere, all at once role shortly thereafter. The best supporting actor win makes Juan the second ever Asian actor to win the category. Third Asian male actor overall to win an Oscar in the Academy Awards near century long history. The actor also won just about every award for a supporting performance, accepting a Screen Actors Guild Award, Critics' Choice Award, Film Independent Spirit Award, and Gotham Award. Thanks for watching. For more Bradshaw Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.